What's up, guys? My name is Andres. This is the Strong Family Money Show. Thanks for coming back. Uh, on the Strong Family Money Show, we teach dads, show dads how to improve their fitness, their finances, and their family. I'm a real estate agent here in Ventura County, so uh, I like to share a lot of information on you know real estate investing, buying homes, all that stuff. Um, I also like to share stuff that's regarding you know stuff outside of that, like your personal life at home, how to improve your, you know, interaction or relationship with your, your wife or, and your kids. Um, we all have to plan for the future. So I share a lot of stuff on, you know, investing and, um, that's used to, you know, when you get close to retirement. Um, so, uh, on today's episode, we're going to talk about, um, real estate investing, um, you know what? How, why? Why would you? Do, how do you make money off of it? Um, and uh, you know, investing in the stock market, and um, just a life tip in general. So here we go. Before before we get started, uh, please visit our sponsor. Please visit our sponsor, FreshCoffee805.com. Without them, we couldn't make these episodes. Um, roasting, delivering freshly roasted organic fair trade coffee to your door. If you live here in Ventura County, you'll get it within days of it being roasted. Freshcoffee805.com. Please visit them. So, how do you make money in real estate investing? You know, how do you, you know? Um, a lot of people don't do it. They want to know why should they do it. So, there's there's a saying that goes, "You make money in real estate." when you buy the property and what they mean by that is it shouldn't be a gamble it shouldn't be you know let's see what happens when we do this um you know you're able to find or ask for or are given all the information you need to decide if this is a good deal um you know is it going to be profitable for you um so there's two two tips that go together here um, so first there's your buying criteria and I've, I've, uh, uh, mentioned before you should have a business plan. Um, I mentioned on this page, I've posted a video on, you know, this similar to this topic, your buying criteria that should be rock solid. Um, you know, you, the only reason you want to change it is to improve it. So to make it even more solid, um, so because so you, you can paint a house, you can you, you know you can remodel a house, you can change the floor. You know, the one thing you cannot change is where a house is, right? You cannot change that. So your buying criteria should be you know, what kind of home am I going to what kind of property am I going to invest in? Condos, townhomes, single family, multifamily, in what condition are the homes going to be in when I purchase them are they going to be moving ready are they going to be almost falling apart decide what your you know condition is um is it going to be more towards professional people um young professionals you know a lot of young professionals they like to be around you know shopping and theater and you know food or is it going to be, you know, I'm looking for people who want to be out of the way from everything, you know, isolated, alone, quiet. So you have to decide if that's what you're going to do also. Uh, is it going to be uh, families? So I only buy properties with big backyards because that's what families want. I only buy properties with three or more bedrooms because that's what families need. Um, so your, your buying criteria need to be set. I don't want to say in stone, but they need to be very rigid. When you decide these are these are my criteria, you do not deviate. If you are a three bedroom, big backyard, um, nice neighborhood person, investor, um, and all of a sudden you see a condo close to a shopping center in, in a busy neighborhood, I I would say that that's probably not in your wheelhouse. Getting the 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 criteria needed to buy it could be the same, but you know you're going to be you have ten homes of one type and you have to market uh, an eleventh of a different type. It could take time away from what you're doing. It's not what you are into. 
right? You need to say, stick to your criteria and only invest in that. Now, your criteria are what gonna help are gonna help you get the money at the end of the day, right? In your criteria, you're also gonna have, I only buy homes that are valued this far under the comps in the area. So you you it's good to make friends with a real estate agent. They can provide you with the comps in the area, right? The the homes in this area have sold for this much, right? It's good to have that. If you're a flipper, it's great to have that information. Uh, you you also want to know in your criteria or just in you know in your business plan. I'm only going. I only have or I'm only going to you uh, invest or spend this much money to renovate the home. So 10, 15, 20K, that's all I'm gonna use to renovate the home. So you then have to say, if if I wanna turn a profit, and I wanna turn this much profit on each property because it takes me this long, after and after I pay everybody, it has to be a um, good deal for me, I have to make this much profit at the end of the day, right? So you know, based on the comps in the area, you know, based on the profit you want to make, and you know, based on the um, money you can spend to renovate the property, you know how much the property has to cost you at the beginning. Okay, so that's so you know all these things are known things, and you can use them to decide if you want to purchase the home. That's step one. That is how you're going to make money in the beginning by saying. This is all I can spend, and this is how much money I want to make, and I only buy properties that fit that criteria, okay? Great. That's step one. Step two, you want to know if you're, so if you're a fix and flipper, that's great. It's done. Bam. You know that information. If you are a buy and hold person, you still want to have that information handy, but you also want to say the rents in this area are this much and those you can find by asking around to other landlords or asking the people in the area that you asking your friends that live in the area how much do you pay for rent right you want to be able to charge the most rent that you can for the property that you are that you own or renting uh, sometimes you have to fix up the property a little bit to raise the rent Sometimes you have to raise the rent over a period of time so that you don't scare away all of your tenants. You want to show your tenants that you are making improvements and because you're making improvements, that requires a higher rent. So you want to know that information from the beginning. From that information, you can do the same thing, right? My loan that I get, my monthly mortgage has to be this much because I'm going to charge this much rent and my expenses insurance all, all the expenses you should be saving for you know capital expenses just in case something happens you got to fix you want to start an account for that you put in there monthly to cover you know radi or water heater and uh you know, eventually a roof right so you have to, all these other accounts you have to start putting money into that's going to come out of your your rent you get from your renter it has to cover taxes it has to cover uh, if you want to put your cash flow in there as well, you should, right? So you want to know what that spread is before you even get into the property, and you'll get better at it over time. The first one is going to be a big project with sp spreadsheets and notebooks and calculators, right? After a couple, you're going to say, oh, you know, this neighborhood is this, and this is how much it costs. So before you enter into a deal, um, you should know if it's going to be a good deal and how much how much you're going to get. Um, at the end of the day in cash flow or if you're a flipper how much you're going to get in profit when you when you sell it so when people say you make your money when you buy the home that's what they mean right you, all this information is out there you want to do your research you want to make sure before you do anything that it you know it it uh, checks all the boxes and all that kind of stuff so um, you know have your math ready have your notebook ready definitely have your criteria ready so that you know when you go into um, a deal it's going to be a deal and you're going to make money either by selling it, how much you're going to make when you sell it or, you know, your cash flow or, you know, rents, what that's going to be um, if you go the rental route. So you make your money when you buy the home, not 
the other way. You don't want to have to figure out and figure it out on the other end. So, um, do your research, write that, write down your stuff, um, have a plan and criteria. Don't change them. So, uh, next, a, a company that makes it a habit to lower operating costs and raise revenue yield higher uh, higher growth. A sound business is round is run soundly. Um, again, and this is probably beating a dead horse. All this information is is online. Um, how a business is run, what their financials are. It's great if they have great PR and they say they're doing awesome, you can verify all that information. Um, you can see what their operating costs are, what they're doing year to year, how they're taking care of their debt, how they're you know trying to make more money for not only themselves, but their investors. Then you can tell as you know, just an investor by looking at their financials, what kind of business it is, how they run it, how the people in charge work. Um, and this, yes, this is for individual investing in an individual company. You, you know, you want to buy Apple stock. You're going to go look at Apple information and see how Apple, how they run Apple compared to all the other companies in, in the space. Uh, you, it's also the same for any funds you're going to write an energy fund, the NASDAQ or, you know, whatever general fund you're going to invest in, you can do the same, same thing. How is that, you know, group of companies doing, how is that sector doing, right? Is, are there anything, any things that they are all doing because of what's going to happen in the future? Um, you know, a sound business is running soundly. You want to make sure their practices are on the up and up and they're thinking of the future, uh, future increase and future gains, not just, you know, how much money can I get in my pocket today? So, um, it's your money. You want to make sure you put it someplace. And this is for investing, right? Trading for something quick, you know, one, you know, 50 cents a buck a share within a day is, you know, that's probably a lot, but, um, if it's something quick that you're doing, then yeah, you want to see quick trends that happen quickly, you get in and out. But if this is investing, you want to see what's going to happen for the long haul and uh, doing your research. And it's I'm sure I've mentioned this a bunch of different episodes. Do your research. Know what the company is all about. Make sure you understand the space that they're in, how they compare to their competition, what they're doing to make themselves different, what they're doing to make sure that they stick around for a long time. Uh, You want to know all that before you get into 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 deep and in you know, commit too much money. Um, yeah, and, and it's, and going back to the real estate, um, you know, real estate segment, you know, you really can just, you know, research and see how much money you're going to make or if it's a good investment. Know that it's going to be a good one. It's going to yield good returns before you give me your money. So next, um, don't let media shape how you perceive people. Get to know them, but don't pass judgment. That's not your job. You can only decide whether or not to let them into your circle. So especially now, we're going through lots of uh, social unrest and upheaval. We hear a lot of uh, talk in the media about uh, how a certain group of people are. Um, I tend not to... Um, and everyone says this, but I really make it a point, um, not to, um, group people together, um, because I would not want to be judged based on whatever group people put me in. Most definitely, uh, I, um, you know, it isn't your job to judge anyone in general. When you meet somebody, um, you should not. You know, decide what kind of person this person is or whether or not to let them into your circle of people. And we all have different levels of, you know, rings of the circle that we want to let let people into until you talk to them and interact with them. Right. Um, So, you know, you, you don't want other people to influence what you perceive other people as being. You want to make sure you want you give them a fair chance, right? You're not going to let everybody, I mean, you're not going to let everyone into your home, 
right? The the and you're not going to let everyone, you know, crash at your pad when they have when they don't have some place to go, right? But you know, there are different rings of of your circle that you let people into, people that you only say hi to, people at work that you, you know, coworkers you work with, right? You have people that you go out and socialize with in a group, you have people you socialize with in a smaller group, right? And all those people should have the same opportunity to be in whatever group you put them in um, and not base that base it on you know you know all the people that look like you the first time I see you and it goes good good or bad right just because someone is clean cut and you know looks like they have a lot of money and have it all together that does not mean that you should automatically put them into you know some group that you you go out with to, to hang out with because you know, before you even get to know them, right? It could be the person that, you know, is portrayed in the media as being just because you seem that way as like the worst kind of people. Just because they look that way, right, does not mean that that's the kind of person that they that they are, right? You should, you know, all within context, of course, right? You should give them a shot to be as much of a friend to you or a coworker or. Um, confidant as as you would you know this other person that you perceive or somebody perceives to be in, in a um, a better social circle so uh, give everybody a fair shot you never know who you're going to meet who's going to help you out and who you can help right and um, you giving people the same shot to be you know your friend or your your co-worker you know is is um Something that is lacking now and something that should be at the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, so, yeah, that's my soapbox. So I'm going to get off it now. So my name is Andres. This is a Strong Family Money Show. Thanks for watching. Uh, visit our sponsor, FreshCoffee805.com. Without them, we couldn't make these episodes. Uh, I'm a real estate agent here in Ventura County. If you want to talk real estate stuff, uh, message me, email me. I'd be happy to, you know, go out and with a for a cup of coffee with you and discuss whatever questions you have about real estate. Uh, like and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time.